Hi everybody, welcome back to Fragmental. I've got a high street haul. In this video, I'm gonna give you my top five cheap high street fragrances. So, grab a coffee, settle in, and stay tuned to FM. Cheers. Most of us love a good bargain, including me. Take note, Roger Dove. So I've been sifting through some of the cheapest high street fragrances to give you my top five picks, but also to let you know which store I think is the best one to buy your cheap fragrances from. I can't take credit for this video idea. A good friend of mine and neighbor, Alec, who lives just two doors down that way, said to me in the gym the other day, I think a great idea for a video would be to search out some of the cheapest and the best high street fragrances. So. Here we are. So this is based on me going into several stores and obviously there are too many fragrances across the stores that I went in to purchase all of them. So I've picked out what I thought were the ones that appealed to me the most and the ones that I felt were the best. So this is just a selection. So this is kind of my take on it. It's not really the definitive take because I haven't smelled all the fragrances across all the stores. So we're gonna go through the ones that I've got briefly and then I'm gonna come up with my top five list and also let you know which I think is the best store. I'm gonna start off with a store that we have here in the UK. I'm not sure if there's a US uh, equivalent or if they're in Europe as well, but it's called Sports Direct. They, they stock the Beckham line. I haven't tried any of the Beckham line. The only experience I've had with Beckham is a colleague of mine came into work smelling really good. I asked him what the fragrance was. He said it was a Beckham. He didn't know which one it was. So I've not been able to track down exactly which one he was wearing. But it smelled really nice. So I thought I'd try one of them. They had quite a few in Sports Direct. I went for Intimately Beckham. It was cheap. It was, I think, about £12. So not very costly. And I think the Beckham line seems to aim itself at kind of the teen market, really, because of the price. And also, the fragrances, unfortunately, aren't very long lasting. This one's actually really nice, intimately Beckham. It's got a pretty cool bottle. And when I sprayed this, instantly the smell to me was familiar. And it's only familiar because recently I did a review on a fragrance called Intrigo Devastante from Parfums Vintage. And that is an almost exact copy of Dolce & Gabbana by Man. So I sprayed Intrigo Devastante on one hand and I sprayed Intimately Beckham on the other and I smelled it and as with Intrigo, the nutmeg note is really prominent for me. So I was smelling and I was getting the nutmeg and I was thinking, wow, you know, that's, that's pretty close. And I smelt Intrigo and then I went back to Beckham and uh, it wasn't there. So <laughs> it lasted about 20 minutes in terms of projection and maybe one to two hours as a skin scent. So longevity on me anyway was pretty poor. I sometimes get this, I claim poor longevity. Other people say they get something that, that is beast mode. So maybe that's the case, but for me, not great longevity. And reading into the Beckham line, that seems to be um, across the board what people tend to say. Really nice fragrances, just not the best longevity. Another brand that I wasn't aware of uh, in terms of them making fragrances was Yardley. So made in the UK, um, English brand. We have a shop here in York called Boys and they stock lots of cheap um, things and, and discounted things. And I came across these fragrances. I didn't even know they sold fragrances in Boys, but uh, I went in just on the off chance and I got these two. So we've got Ink and 1770. So this one, really nice bottle. I paid five pounds for, I think this is a 75 mil. So really cheap. I think it was half price as well, but I think it's probably discounted all the time. This one, it's okay. Fairly pleasant. It's got a leathery note to it. It's called ink. So I think that is supposed to represent a kind of inky type smell as well. So that gives you some idea of that one. Um, longevity. Not very good. This, like the Beckham one, wore away after a few minutes. Um, even nicer bottle. I mean, for, for a five pound fragrance, four, four pounds 99, this bottle is just gorgeous. I mean, there's, there's some leather around the cap. Um, the cap's not too cheap and plasticky. There's a bit of weight to it. The bottle has just a really nice 
design. And this one is a really gorgeous scent. It's got lots of depth, it's got a bit of complexity to it. To me, I got a bit of booziness. So I was really excited about this one. Again, longevity, not great. After 20 minutes, the projection had died down and it was barely a skin scent. So again, that seems to be what you find with a lot of cheap fragrances, that they smell nice initially. So you spray them in the shop and you think, oh, that's, that's good and it's great value. And then unfortunately, they don't really last on the skin. So had high hopes for those, but they didn't really perform for me. Let's go to Zara. So obviously Zara is one of the, the best known stores for having cheap, but good quality fragrances. So I smell quite a few of them. I visited two different Zara stores. So uh, each store sometimes have different fragrances. The first store I went in didn't have the uh, Night Pour On 3, for example. They had one and two. So I've got three here and these represent the ones that I was most interested in and I thought smelled the nicest, but they do make a lot of really lovely fragrances, really, really nice. I enjoyed all of them, to be honest, and they range from as little as about, I think, seven or eight pounds all the way up to 20 pounds. So you're getting um, a, a difference in, in, in price slightly, but none of them are expensive at all. So this one is the weekend till 12 a.m. The lady in Zara uh, who was working there actually said this was her favorite. So I smelled this one and I get a bit of a uh, kind of marine aquatic saltiness from this one. It's definitely a freshie. It's uh, similar to Invictus Aqua, but without the um, the big projection that you get, certainly from the 2016 Invictus Aqua, and it doesn't have that slight bubblegummy Invictus DNA. Really pleasant scent. As with a lot of light citrus scents, again, longevity wasn't amazing. I got an hour where I could smell it on my skin, and I wore it for work one day. By the end of my shift, it was barely detectable, so that wasn't a great performer for me. These Zara bottles, by the way, are really nice. They've got a lot of weight. They feel expensive. They don't feel cheap at all. And the quality of the scents inside the bottles uh, reflects that as well. So the other Zara one I've got is Soul. This one, again, reminds me of uh, a little bit of Invictus, but again, you don't get that, um, that distinctive Invictus bubblegummy type of vibe to it. This one I prefer to that. I got better performance and longevity off this one. Um, really nice casual day scent or work scent. I'm going to enjoy wearing this one. I don't own a bottle of uh, Invictus anymore. I've got some samples which I tested against this. Uh, so because I don't have a bottle, this will do very nicely. My favourite from Zara was Night Pour On 3. So I love slightly darker fragrances, smooth, rich, deep fragrances that have a complexity to them. And I get that from this one. This doesn't have many notes listed, certainly on Fragrantica. Anyway, I think it has some cedar and lavender and bergamot and a couple of other things, but not many at all. But it seems to me like there's more going on in there. It's, it's just a beautiful scent. I almost get a cherry tobacco vibe from this. Tobacco's not listed at all, but I get that, that kind of vibe. So for me, I love tobacco in fragrances, sweet tobacco, so this works really well for me. It's Eau de Parfum Concentration. It projects as well as lots of expensive designer and niche fragrances, and the longevity uh, is also very good. So fantastic performance. Bottle is really nice, as nice as any bottle you will find out there on the market. And this one was, $12.99, so amazing bargain. Uh, Zara Night Pour On 3, this was my favorite of all the Zara fragrances I smelled. Okay, so we've got another store here called Poundland in the UK. I nearly didn't go in because I thought, yeah, is it worthwhile? What are you gonna get for a pound? But I wanted to cover as many stores as possible, so I went in and I had a look. There was about six available, I bought three of them. I get quite a generic designery type scent. I don't know if they're clones, I couldn't pin them down as being clones of anything specific, but you get that very pleasant, almost crowd-pleasing, commercial, uh, designery type smell from them. And uh, 
I was more impressed than I thought I was going to be. The one that I liked the best out of these was this one, which is called Hot Waves. And this one was a little bit barbershoppy to me. It had a really nice barbershop type lavender shaving foam type of smell. It's 75 mil, it's an eau de toilette, and it was one pound, so just crazily cheap. So it's not a beast mode fragrance, it's not gonna last a long time. You're gonna maybe get um, half an hour projection, maybe uh, two to three hours on the skin. But this would be an amazing scent to just put on after the shower if you're not going out anywhere and you just want to smell nice and fresh around the house. Or if you're going out for a couple of hours, it's during the day and you just want to have a lovely, nice, kind of fresh smell. Then for one pound, it's pretty amazing to be honest. You can't really go wrong. Yes, it doesn't last very long. Yes, it's, uh, it's quite a, a generic scent. It's, it's not gonna change the world. But for what it is, for a pound, I thought it was fantastic and uh, just look at the bottle design. Niche, eat your heart out. Let's move on to the final store that I went into and you can see these are the ones I have the most of. It's Primark. So I recently put out a video on a fantastic fragrance from Primark which was a clone of Tom Ford's Black Orchid. I'll come to that one. I hadn't looked at fragrances in Primark before and when I went in they had more than I thought. So I was, I was impressed with the range that they had. And also, they have scents marketed to males, scents marketed to females, but there's crossover there because a lot of them are definitely unisex. So let's just quickly run through these. Uh, Summit, pretty nice scent, has a bit of uh, a, a cool water, green Irish tweedness to it. So I think there's maybe some dehydromersinol in here. It wasn't a great clone of those fragrances. There's other things I, I get in there as well. There's hints of, uh, of, of cool water, but it's nowhere near as um, deep and rich and complex as, as those fragrances. Um, as, a, as a quick, easy to spray day scent, it's maybe worth it. It was three pounds. So not a bad scent, but not really one that I'll be wearing very much at all. Uh, this one, Courage, is uh, um, definitely trying to be a Creed Aventus. So it gets quite close to the scent DNA. You smell it, it's definitely recognisable as that Aventus DNA. It was two pounds for this little travel size bottle, which is pretty cool um, if, you're, if you're going away anywhere and you don't want to take a lot of fragrance with you. Longevity on this wasn't great. Um, half an hour, it was becoming a faint skin scent. So this is one that you would have to keep respraying. Two pounds, you could take it out with you and respray every couple of hours and have that very pleasant Aventus DNA. Uh, but performance not very good. Uh, better in performance was this one, Fierce, which to my nose seems to be uh, their interpretation of Dolce & Gamana's The One. I tested this against the, the One EDP. This is an eau de toilette. So uh, I think the performance of my EDP was better. I got more depth and richness to my EDP, but it's definitely got the One scent DNA. Longevity wasn't too bad. There was a reasonable hour of projection and then it's a skin scent for three or four hours. Uh, again, two pounds for what is a really lovely scent DNA. I love the one, it's one of my favorites. I love the, the Tonka that you get in there. Bit of Mandarin as well, actually says Mandarin and Tonka on the bottle. So that's fierce, uh, not a clone of the uh, Abercrombie fragrance. Really nice option if you just want to spend a couple of pounds on a fragrance. Um, this one, Elements. Quite fresh, a bit of intensity to it. I think there's some spices in there as well. I think this is supposed to be the uh, fragrance that is targeted towards evening wear. Uh, longevity, again, not great. Very pleasant scent, didn't last very long on my skin. This one was £3.50. Now, Primark are quite famous for having a range that copies Jo Malone. I tried a few of them in the store. They were all really nice. My favourite of their Joe Malone clones was Pomegranate and Black Tea, which is their clone of Pomegranate Noir. My wife wears Pomegranate Noir, so I'm very familiar with the smell. And I've got to say, 
this one is excellent. I would say this is, this was in the female section and to me pomegranate noir is uh, leaning on the feminine side. I probably wouldn't wear this one, but I can appreciate that it is a beautiful scent. So uh, well worth it. I just got the travel size. I think the full size 100ml bottle was only £8. So that is a brilliant one. Uh, the last two I have to look at here. So we're going to go with um, Blanc. This is the Pour on Blanc Eau de Parfum Concentration, 75ml. This was £6. This, when you spray it on, is, is exquisite actually. It's a lovely, um, clean, crisp, masculine, gentlemanly scent. I believe this is a take on Dior's Eau Sauvage, so not Sauvage, but Eau Sauvage. And you do get that lovely uh, classic gentleman's feel with this one. It didn't last great. This, um, to me, after about 20 minutes, faded away on my skin. Other people have told me that they have great performance off this one, so it could just be my skin. So don't just take my word for it. For six pounds, or it's at least worth going into Primark, spraying it on your skin with one of their testers and seeing how long it lasts on you. But lovely scent, too light for me, didn't last very long. The best one from Primark was the one that I've recently done a review on. This is Pour Homme Noir. It's again Eau de Parfum Concentration. It was six pounds. This is their take on Tom Ford's Black Orchid. So if you're watching this video and uh, you're a lady, don't worry that this is marketed towards men. Go and buy it if you like Black Orchid because it is lovely interpretation. I was actually in the um, female fragrance section and a lady came up and she was testing the fragrances and because I'd already done my review of this one I, uh, I thought I'd let her know that there was a Black Orchid clone because she wouldn't have gone to the to the men's section to check out fragrances. So I said to her, do you like Black Orchid? And she said, yeah, I, I love it. I said, well, that one over there in the men's section is actually a really nice copy of Black Orchid. So she went over, she sniffed it and she couldn't believe it. And she said, thanks so much for that. And she bought it. So um, there you go, getting some sales for you, Primark. So this one is the best of the bunch from Primark, but overall, some really nice offerings and the prices are just fantastic. Sorry, there's one I've forgotten, which is also a really nice one. This is uh, Amber Noir, and I love amber in fragrances. This is um, almost smells a little bit oody as well, this one. So it's got a nice potency, kicks off the skin really nicely. It's got that lovely um, smoothness and rich depth that you get often from ambery fragrances. It's, um, it's just really beautiful. I haven't smelt the Joe Malone Dark Amber and Ginger Lily, but because this is in all the bottles that are emulating the Joe Malone fragrances, I'm assuming that this is Primark's take on it. So I haven't smelled a Joe Malone. If it smells as good as this, I mean, it's a fantastic fragrance because I paid eight pounds for 100 ml of this one and uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. I almost get a bit of booziness from that as well. So you can't really go wrong with Amber Noir. Performance was moderate, so a really nice, uh, a good strong hour, hour and a half of projection. And then it was on the skin for five to six hours. So for eight pounds, that one's really good value. Amber Noir is excellent. Okay, so now I've talked about all the fragrances I purchased. I'm gonna come up with my top five list. Number five, I'm going Poundland just because of that bottle, <laughs> it's just amazing. So Hot Waves from Poundland is the really nice barbershoppy lavender, taking into account the amount of juice you get and the scent itself, very pleasant, although it doesn't last very long, and you get 75 mil all for one pound. So I just think that is pretty decent value. Number four, I'm gonna go with Primark's The One inspiration. So this is Fierce. Again, taking into account the scent and the price, it was excellent. So two pounds for that one. That is number four. Number three, I'm going with one of the Zara's. Beautiful light blue juice in here. It's Soul, the one that's fairly similar to Invictus, although not an exact clone. But don't think of, don't always think of the Zara fragrances as clones. And if they're not exact to what you think they're cloning, that, that they're not worth buying. Think of them as standalone scents. 
And if you like the scent, then go for it because the cost is just fantastic. So Soul is number three. Number two, I'm going with this superb Black Orchid clone from Primark. This one for me was around 90% close to Black Orchid. A little sweeter than Black Orchid uh, and it didn't quite have that um, earthiness that Black Orchid has. So maybe not quite the complexity but in the air I don't think anyone would tell the difference. This was £6. I love Black Orchid. It's a beautiful fruity chocolatey fragrance so worthy of the number two place. All right, what's gonna be my number one? For number one, I'm going back to Zara. Zara Night Pour Homme 3. All the Zara Night fragrances are all really nice. This one was my favorite. I don't know if it's copying any other fragrance at all, but I'm just judging this on how much I like the scent itself. I'm judging it on the cost, which was 12.99 for 100 ml. It's a really nice bottle and I just can't get enough of this scent. I haven't put my scent of the day on yet, so I'm going to spray this one. One more. Quite a few sprays because I do enjoy it. So there we go. My number one Zara Night Pour Homme 3 is beautiful. Overall, the store that I think is worth visiting the most for your fragrances in terms of the options and in terms of how close some of their fragrances are to more expensive designer fragrances, I've got to say is Primark. I was really impressed with their range. Their Geo Malone interpretations are absolutely fantastic and so, so super cheap. So go to Primark, they have testers out, spray till your heart's content, find a few that you really like, you know which my recommendations are. Um, certainly uh, try all the Joe Malone ones. If I had a six and seven on this list, I would be going with two more from Primark, which is part of the reason why I think um, they're the best store for the fragrances. So Amber Noir and the Pomegranate and Black Tea are just really gorgeous fragrances. Okay, that's enough from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you like a good bargain, check out some of the deals in some of the stores that I've covered in this video. And if you do buy any, please let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your comments on cheap fragrances. Please like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell to enable notifications. And until next time, keep tuning into FM and keep smelling cheap. Uh, good.